GME's DJ Sam Station. Yeah, yeah. Siempre le pregunto a Dios por qué él se llevó a mi primo Frankie. Well, 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 well. Bueno, bueno, bueno. Hey, Junior Clote, ¿cómo estamos? ¿Cómo estamos? ¿Cómo estamos? Por favor, compartan este video. Por favor, compartan este video. Estamos aquí en vivo con el único Tito Pico Lins desde Nueva York. It was good, Angel. Sí, por favor, compartan este video, compartan este video. Ok, esa fue una de las canciones del único Tito Pingolinis. Yo, everybody, welcome to Fun Conversations with Sensation. I'm your host, DJ Sensation. Y aquí es un placer traerles a ustedes uno de los reyes de la punta rock, uno de los fenómenos ahorita en el género de punta. Tito Pingolinis, let's go, baby. What up, what up, what up, what up, what up? Ajá, Tito. Ya viene entonces. Lo tenemos aquí en vivo, en Fun Conversations with Sensation. One, two, one, two. Feels like I'm about to record. <laughs> For real. What's yeah. up, though, man? Yo, everybody to tuning in. Thank you. Share this video. Share this video. You already know it's about to get lit right now. You know, I got my boy Tito Pingolinis, and no vamos a aprender. So, solo estamos esperando que algunas gentes más se, se suban y comenzaremos. Solo dos minutos más. All right, cool, cool. Hay tiempo para tomarme mi agüita. <laughs> compartan este video, compartan este video, por favor. Ok. Bueno. Yo, Tito. What's up, bro? Yo, how you doing? How was your trip over here to Houston? It was great, as usual. You you came here with your mom this time around, right? Definitely. And how how how's everything going so far since you know, you've been here for like 24 hours now, right? Yeah, no, I would say more like 48. 48? Yeah, oh, yeah. okay. And it's been going good. You know, it's the it's the first time in a long time that I travel with my mom. 
the last time I traveled with my mom, I was maybe like a little kid. Mm. We went to Honduras and stuff like that. So, you know, it feels good. And, you know, I'd rather bring it to a place that I know instead of going somewhere that, you know, because we could have went anywhere else. Yeah. I know there were some people like, why Houston? But, you know, I know here and I'm always out here. So, you know. And you could take a different places in Houston. Exactly. Would you ever, like, think about going maybe to the Alamo in San Antonio? I don't even know what's that, bro. But <laughs> <laughs> if you're recommending it and it's, some, and it's something interesting, then maybe, of course. Yeah, you know, for the history people, the people that like history, you know, the Alamo represents a big cultural uh, thing for, like, the Mexicans, American, okay. or the Chicanos. Okay, okay. So, yeah. But, yeah, cool. I wanted to ask you, bro, mm -hmm. why the name Tito Pingolinis? Why the name Tito Pingolinis? Why? Because it's catchy. <laughs> right? It's catchy. And I feel like, you know, Garifuna people, Garifuna people have this thing where they like to, um, you know, like, put their own definitions to things. So you can imagine... You can imagine what people think pingolinis means, but it's not that. But the fact that it'll make you think of that, you know, it's kind of like, you know, it's just something for the mind, basically. Or whatever, like, hmm, pingolinis. Eh, pingolinis, that, hmm, pingolinis, <laughs> or whatever. Mm -hmm. Yo, I, I'm not going to front. I was one of those people that, like, when I first heard your name, Tito Pingolinis, mm -hmm. you know, my mind, the way I am, yeah. I was like, Tito Pingolinis, hmm, mm -hmm. does that mean that he probably, you know, Pega con la pinga, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I go see, me entendés? Like, yo, mm -hmm. you know, I was just thinking like, like, cause he's like, Pingolini, that, that name mm -hmm. will make anybody of think. Of course, of course. And then when you hear the music, it's like, oh, hold on, wait, what? Like, you know, it's like, it can't be confusing. But then again, it's cool. I feel like, you know, that's that, that will like, you know, make me stand out as an artist. Yeah. And, you know, there's a couple of us that have our trademarks and stuff like that or whatever. But see? Yo, uh, that's that's very creative. Mm -hmm. that, for yeah. you to come up with a name like that and actually for you to think about it, it's mm -hmm. cool, you know? Because yeah. uh, most people don't really think about their name when they put it. They just probably go with the moment. Yeah, exactly. Um, mm -hmm. But, uh, for instance, like, when when I decided to name myself Sam Sation, as an example, mm -hmm. um, my wife helped me with this one. Okay. Because I was thinking, like, what could, what could go, how can I come up with a name that represents how I am as a person? Mm -hmm. Which, you know, I got my times when I'm lit. Yeah. I'm, you know, when I'm sensational, mm -hmm. when when I feel like I could grab the attention. Yeah. How, what words could come up with that? And then my wife, I don't know where she was like, you know, mm -hmm. lituation, sensation. How about you put your name? And that's why I put Sam Sation. Instead of sensation, it's Sam. Yo, that's creative. Yo, let me tell you something. Females, bro, females are very creative. And, you know, sometimes us men, we try to act like, you know, we know it all. <laughs> But, you know, like, my girl is like that, too. Like, she'll tell me sometimes, like, oh, babe, you know, I think you should try this or try that or whatever. And I'll be like, oh, snap. So inteligente, if you have to. <laughs> yes. For real. Mm -hmm. I mean, everybody, if you have, you know, if your partner doesn't really influence your career or your life in the right direction or doesn't give you proper ideas to make you look mm -hmm. better or elevate yourself, I don't mm -hmm. know. You shouldn't be with that person, in my opinion. Exactly. Exactly. So, yo, Pingolini is like, when did you discover, when did you find out that you had talent for music? Like, how did you know this was your niche? How did I know? Um, all right. My dad, right? My dad was a musician. He played in a, um, he played in a group called Fuerza Brava. <clears throat> oh. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, my dad was the keyboard player of Fuerza Brava. And, you know, that's a group from the early 80s into the early 90s. So it's basically, like, you know, in my blood. Like, you know, I was born, like, you know, not even to sound cocky, but I was basically, like, you know, born to do it. Because yeah. not only my dad, you know, also my grandfather from my mom's side was also a musician and stuff like that. But to answer your question the correct way, right, um, yeah. when I first, like, discovered that I had talent was, like, about, let me see, I had to be, like, about six years old. Wow. Yeah, I had to be, like, about six years old. And, and, and you know how I discovered it? It's funny because at that time, um, Figaga had just dropped his album, Giribuba, the song that he got, um, Nyahombe, Nyahombe. <laughs> yeah. Right? So, Classic. So, yeah, so I knew how to do the melody. Right? I knew how to do that or whatever. But the part that you have to accompany with the piano, I was like all wrong. So my dad had this sequencer, right? My dad had this sequencer where you could like, you know, record eight tracks. So I had recorded that melody. <laughs> And what, what I, and, and what I was doing on the other hand, like strumming, I was like totally off. So my dad was like, no, Tito, you're wrong. But you're doing the melody right. So after that, when I discovered that I could play back a melody or whatever and stuff like that, that's when I realized. And after that, that's when my life changed at six years old. That's a very young age. Um, younger, 
Mm-hmm. <coughs> eso pasa, por eso tengo mi agua, por eso tengo mi agua. Facts. Mm-hmm. Oh, beban. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that ass. We good, we good. Hey, we human, bro. That's that's you know that's 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 reactions of the human body. Shit. For real. Well, see, there you go. He's back. He's back. <laughs> hey, but this is live, though. This is live, raw, and edited in mm-hmm. the way I intended it to be from the beginning. You know, because I could have easily, you know, record all my interviews and then edit them mm-hmm. um, for moments like this, but I decided not to. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, bro, like, okay, I know that you are multi-talented. Like, what instruments do you play? <laughs> I play a couple. I play a couple of instruments, and I don't feel like I've mastered any, but. You know, like, you know, I play, all right, like, my first instrument is the piano, mm-hmm. and after the piano, I would say from the piano, I just went to, like, the percussion, like, congas and stuff like that, and I play a little bit of drums, you know, I don't consider myself a drummer, but, you know, I could, you know, I could, I could, I can take someone out of a predicament or whatever <laughs> and stuff like that. I also play a little bit of bass, and, you know, um, what else, guitar. Yeah, I got a little bit of vocals too, and I also produce too, you know. So, and I feel like you know, being a producer, you have to, um, you know, um, you have to put yourself on that level where you play almost every instrument and stuff like that. Para casi nadie te engaña, or whatever. You feel me? I feel you, mm-hmm. man. And I saw your skills, like in your in the party that we had at you know my old place, Land Caribbean mm-hmm. now. Yeah, that's. I, I saw your skills in many things, like from the soundboard mm-hmm. to the bass mm-hmm. to even like putting together the. The drum set, yeah. The cable, uh, mm-hmm, putting the mm-hmm, cable. You know, I was mm-hmm. watching you. Yo, I was that's like, crazy. Mm-hmm. He got a lot of talent, and um, mm-hmm. honestly, I respect that because I, I love this. This, mm-hmm. this one of the things that I, you know, obviously I'm doing this for a reason. Yeah. Um, it, to me, it's more, it's more than fun. It's, it's, it's educational. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Like you can do what you choose to do with these type of things. Yep. With either you positively. Um, influence somebody or neg- negatively mm-hmm. influence somebody. Exactly. And I feel like you do both, mm-hmm. in my opinion, but you do more positive than negative. Yeah. I feel like for a person that started at a very young age, you're still young compared yeah. to most people in this game. Mm-hmm. And you still got a long way to go. And in that long way to go, I feel like you're going to win the hearts of a lot of people. Yep, exactly. And um, I also, w- when I say that, I also was wondering, like, how do your parents feel about you pursuing this, this field? Like, you know, the music entertainment world, you know. Mm-hmm. Honestly, like, I have support from both of my parents. And what's mainly important is that I even have a great relationship with them. So I feel like anything that I was to want to do, they will support me. But as far as, like, you know, my mu- like my music and stuff like that, my um, my dad supports me a lot or whatever and like, you know, everything I do. My mom, you know, my mom used to dance back in the days or whatever and stuff like that, you know. So she be having her little, you know, critics. Even when I'm recording with other people, she be like... Esa parte como no, you know, or whatever, and I just go back and I fix it, and then, you know, she'll be like, oh, you know, ahora sí. So it's just like, you know, just having her, just having her, what you call it, just having her there to hear my stuff and be like, yo, change this, change that, it's a blessing. And she also helps me with my garifuna, too, because I'm not a fluent garifuna speaker. Oh, you would have you would have tricked me. You actually <laughs> did trick me. You fooled me. Mm-hmm. So you know, I'd be asking my mom, "Okay, ma, cómo se dice esto en Garifuna or whatever." Even for some of the curses, she'd be like, "Ay, no, que vas a decir eso." I'm like, "Ma, usted no se preocupe, <laughs> just translate it or whatever." <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, but my parents are very supportive, you know, and I love them dearly, you know, or whatever. Yep. I feel like uh, that's one of the reasons I feel like your music will go further because you are a family person, mm-hmm. and when when you have a good heart, I, mm-hmm. you know. Blessings come to you naturally. Exactly. And um, regardless of what anybody might think. Uh, by the way, thank you everybody for tuning in. Please share this video. Yes, thank you, thank you, thank w- you. What's up, Melly? Hello, Nixa. Hey, what's up, Ginger? Hey, DJ Lito, como esta? DJ Lito, mi hermano. Hey, he's yes. Gonna be, he's going to be very disappointed in me. Oh, my God. <laughs> but I'm not going to drop the bomb right here. I'm going to call him personally. <laughs> DJ Lito, vas a estar un poquito enojado conmigo, hermano, pero yo te llamo, yo te llamo, yo te llamo. Yo, Andy, what's good, Andy? Andy, en su nuevo álbum, por favor, vayan a comprar las nuevas canciones de Andy y compren el nuevo álbum de Tito Pergolini, his latest album. ¿Cómo se llama, Tito? I'm just playing, ladies. You know I love you. Goddamn right. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, so, man, I like the fact that your parents actually support you. Yeah. Like, that's, that's really a great thing because I feel like uh, on the road to success, mm-hmm. you need somebody to back you up. Exactly. And, and it all starts from home. Mm-hmm. For real. And, and when and when you don't have your parents backing you up, it could be like 10 times harder. Exactly. Because they're not, they're not going to see what you're trying to do. They're, therefore, they're going to demoralize you. 
So the fact that you got your parents on your back, mm-hmm. man, that's that's a blessing. Bro, with my own eyes, I've seen people looking for what they don't have in their families with other people. And it's just, you know, it's kind of heartbreaking sometimes because sometimes when that's all you have, like, you know, you would wish that that's what everybody has. Yeah. Or whatever, you know. But a veces hay gente que, you know, life, you know, didn't go that way for them. Pero, you know, that's how it is. Yes. Yep, yep. And, um... Um, I definitely agree, and that's why sometimes I. But anyways, I I, I'm the type of person whether I have the support of somebody or not, mm-hmm. I still go ahead and I do what I what I gotta do. Exactly. I do what I want to do. Exactly. Uh, because in my journey to the place that I'm at now, mm-hmm. I didn't really have that much support. Yeah. Coming here, so I know in the music world it's hard. You know, like making bread. Mm-hmm. You know, you gotta eat, right? Yeah, exactly. And, and in the exactly. Garifuna community, let's be real, it's hard to eat from this. Exactly. How come? How come you haven't got discovered yet? Like, what makes you keep going? Honestly, what makes me keep going is the fact that I love it. And when I say I love it, I'm talking about like I love it. Like, meaning that if I was to set up somewhere and just play my music and nobody's watching me. I'm going to continue because it's something it's something about music that I'm infatuated with or whatever and stuff like that. So I just feel like I just feel like I love music so much that it doesn't even matter and honestly, I don't want to I don't want to like you know sound like ignorant or whatever, but the people's like you know what they criticize, that's the last thing I have on my mind because I don't want to say garifunas, but just the human being is never satisfied with anything. Whoa, that, man, can, can you say that one more time? <laughs> the human being is never satisfied with anything. Fuck. You get what I'm saying? So it's just like, you know, I don't want to, you know what I didn't want to do? Like, you know, when I came over here, I didn't want to categorize my Garifuna people because a lot of people do that. Yes. And I understand we're not perfect, but guess what? Nobody else is perfect. I agree. Or whatever and stuff like that. So, you know, I'll just say the human being instead of saying Garifunas. Mm-hmm. Or whatever. Mm-hmm. Honestly, like when w- when we speak about our people, it's not that we're speaking bad. Yeah. But I feel like things won't change mm-hmm. unless we speak about it, and that's the problem. As as soon as somebody comes in a platform like this one and they speak their mind, mm-hmm. it becomes a problem. Yep. Because a lot of people in our community are very sensitive. They're mm-hmm. sensitive to the true harsh facts. Exactly. And I feel like things won't get better until they do. And I feel like people like you, Little June, mm-hmm. uh, Andy, yeah. y'all are from this generation, mm-hmm. from my generation. Y'all, y'all could change things for the better. Yeah. Like, I remember you once telling me, like, all of us younger people from this generation should mm-hmm. come together and we should work together so we could be able to do things that are, are amazing and exactly. different. Exactly. And I, I totally agree with you. Mm-hmm. Like, wh- but what made you feel that way? Like, what made you feel like all of us should come together? What made me feel that way is like, all right, like you just brought up, I'm a family person, right? So growing up as a kid, you know, I went to a lot of gatherings. I went to a lot of gatherings, and it's just like, um, still on that same topic of me being a family person. You know, sometimes just going to relatives' house and you hear these stories from back in the days. Like, hey, me recuerdo aquellos tiempos en Kingsbridge cuando tararara, cuando bailaba tal, tal persona. <laughs> so I feel like for this generation, we need our own story. You get what I'm saying? So yes. I feel like all of us that are in the same age range, I feel like, you know, we have to create that. Because, you know, I feel like a lot of people are lost when it comes to finding themselves within the Garifuna community and all of that or whatever. So it's just like, I feel like we got to appreciate each other a lot because... We're the ones that's going to be telling our kids how things used to be now. I agree. Or whatever and stuff like that. So that's mainly why I have that mindset or whatever. And Mm -hmm. like, okay, so talking about that working together, Mm -hmm. like do you have anybody in mind right away who you would like to do like a featuring and like somebody that you want to work with or a band or somebody? Do you have anybody in mind? Um, Yo, you know what's crazy, bro? When it comes to the studio, man. The studio is not something that I don't know. I feel like <clears throat> the studio is not something that I play with. You like, like you get what I'm saying? Like yeah. for example, just because you have talent and I have talent, a lot of people be like, "Yo, we should do something together." Mm-hmm. But I'm not. I don't know. I, I don't. Damn. I, I know I said this a couple of times already, but I don't mean to sound ignorant. But I don't believe in um. I don't believe in unnecessary collaborations. Oof. Like you feel me? Like there's songs out there with other people on it, and then you just hear it, and then it's just like, yo. It do, it don't even sound like they was in the studio together. So I feel like it all depends on the vibe. And, you know, we got to, like, you know, have something going on. Why? Because it's so much hate. It's so much hate going on that if I sit right now in this chair and I'd be like, yeah, man, it doesn't matter. I could work with anybody. I know I'll be lying to myself. 
I agree. Because a lot of people don't even allow themselves to be worked with or whatever and stuff like that. So, you know. But to answer your question, right, anybody that I think of that I could work with, like what, do they have to be popping right now or is it just anybody? Any generation. Any generation? Yeah. Right now. Anybody that I would like to work with and be like, yo, you know what? I, yo, you know what's crazy? I feel like if I mention it, nobody's going to know who I'm talking about because there's a lot of people that's underground. There's people out there that have music, but they just don't know how to come out with it or whatever. Because I have a cousin named Felix Reyes that he has great songs. I actually, I actually heard of him. Okay. Yeah, matter of fact, he sings, um, what's that song? Um, um, Quiero que lo baile como una culebra. Yep. Que lo, yeah, that Tubion joint. He sings that. He composes music too, like Punta songs and all of that. So, you know, I feel like these are people that are not known or whatever. But as far as people who's known or whatever, let me see. Like, you know, people people who have, like, you know, deep messages or whatever. Yeah. Because I just got into this thing where I don't want to be one of those producers that just wants to showcase my talent on everything I do. Mm-hmm. I want to be able to, you know, be equal with it. So I'll say I have a list. Emilio Nunez, um, Baby Lou. You know, um, Pichi Castillo himself, you know, he's great. Yes. Yo, you know who else has great music, bro? Who? YGS, bro. Yo, dead ass. YGS has great <laughs> lyrics, great music. And I'm not a fluent Garifuna speaker, but I made it my business to ask them, you know, what their music is about and stuff like that. And they have great music, bro. No, I agree. Like, mm-hmm. YGS, I, I believe, like, most of the people in the group YGS are very talented. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I don't know why, like mm-hmm. why they haven't come out with a solid album mm-hmm. yet. Mm-hmm. But I feel like they all talented. I don't yeah. know what's going on within their own organization. Mm-hmm. But I, me personally as a fan, because they mm-hmm. know me. They know like, you know, I hire YGS before mm-hmm. and they know that I appreciate them. Yeah. I appreciate the talent that they bring, especially Angel. Mm-hmm. Angel, Black Star, um, mm-hmm. Andy, you know, all of y'all, Kenneth, all of y'all yeah. are cool ass people. Mm-hmm. And you know, I fuck with them. Mm-hmm. Uh, For real. Mm-hmm. And no, despite of any co- contrary op- contrary op- opinion from anybody, mm-hmm. I stand by them. Yeah. I, w- I would say that YGS, mm-hmm. like for instance, when people ask me, which band would you consider that could back me up? I would be YGS. YGS, yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. after YGS, then I would say Disha Garifuna. Mm-hmm. But Disha Garifuna is new. Yeah. So they, they, they still got to organize themselves a little better. Exactly. But Disha Garifuna is good. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to lie. They, mm-hmm. You know, there's a lot of people there that from other bands in the past that they play in other bands. Mm-hmm. So respect goes to Disha Garifuna too. Mm-hmm. Exactly. But, but yeah, so mm-hmm. uh, would you ever make, have you ever made a track with YGS? Um, yes, I did. I made about 10 of them. <laughs> Is it released or unreleased? No, it's unreleased. Oh. It's unreleased. Yeah, we made like about 10 or whatever that's supposed to be, you know, coming out real soon, real soon. They actually like about 85% done or whatever. Oh. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you know, that's one of the reasons why I mentioned them or whatever and stuff like that. I was going to mention Andy too, but I just, you know, dropped the album with Andy or whatever, you know, but he's on that list forever, you know, because oh, he has that spiritual vibe and then, you know, the support he has too is like, you know. Is is just always there or whatever. Mm-hmm. Cause I know I, that's why I didn't I didn't even bother to ask about Andy because mm-hmm. I know that y'all already yeah, exactly. you know y'all work together. Y'all, mm-hmm. we know what it is. Mm-hmm. I, mm-hmm. I know and y'all two definitely know. Mm-hmm. So I didn't feel like I needed to mention because he knows what it is. Andy, you already know. Big Andy respect Ordonez, to you, man. Andy Ordonez. Andy Ordonez, your album is freaking awesome. I, I love it, man. I love it. His album is so positive. Like, mm-hmm. oh my god. Like, I feel like yo, like. Honestly, mm-hmm. he's, he cannot, I cannot wait for him to work on a second album already. Don't get me wrong. Mm-hmm. I know that you Yo, need to... You know to what's p- crazy? That's it. That is his second album. So which one is his first? His first one is Mi Tradición. Hmm. Yeah. Was it, was it properly uh, p- promoted? Like this one? Like the second no, one? No, no, it no, actually right? wasn't. It I, actually I figured wasn't. that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But it's out there. You know it's there. Mm-hmm. And uh, I mean, that's a bunch of... Like, can you... Okay. Can you name like three... Producers from the top of your head? From the top of my head? Garifuna producers. Garifuna producers? Yeah, from the top of your brain. Tito Pingolinis. <laughs> Yo, I, like your, I love your confidence, bro. Okay. King Dave. Uh-huh. Oh, oh, yes, yes. And... Fuck. Damn, why three, bro? Okay, five. Five? Yeah. All right. Tito Pingolinis. Uh-huh. King Dave. Uh-huh. Big Kev. Uh-huh. Young Chris. Young, I, I, young Chris is from LA. He produces for Lover Boy. Oh, and most of the artists in oh, LA. Oh, yeah, for real. Yes. Mm-hmm. Oh young shit. Chris. And the last one, the last one. Let me see. Garifuna, Garifuna, producer, Young P, bro. 
I actually heard young of him. Young P, yes. Yeah. Yes, Young P. Mm-hmm. Actually, there's a, there's a bunch. If you wasn't mentioned right now, remember, this is his opinion. Mm-hmm. Don't get in your bag because <laughs> this is his opinion. Mm-hmm. That's like y'all have your opinion on who's the best rapper, who's the best producer. So does he. We all humans. We all like who we like. Mm-hmm. All right? Mm-hmm. So moving on. Yes. Okay, so which one have you worked with recently? Which ones have I worked with recently? Um, Big Kev. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Big Kev. Yeah. Yo, Big respect to Big Kev. Yes. Mm-hmm. That mm-hmm. guy is phenomenal. He's yeah. awesome. He's mm-hmm. cool as fuck. Yep. So, um, have you made a track with him? Like, like Tito Pingolini's feature, featuring Big Kev type shit. Yo, actually, nah, bro. Ever? No, but I know it's going to happen one day. And it's going to be big. <laughs> that song is going to be it's gonna be something major. Mm-hmm. Uh, man, I agree. Yep. Big respect to Big Kev, man. I can't wait for our event. All Black Affair, October 13th. DJ Junkstone, DJ Grimms, DJ Tortuga, Fatima, Baby Lou. Ahí nos vamos a aprender ese día, octubre 13, 2018, yeah. Southwest Houston. Nos vamos a aprender. Si no estás ahí, te lo vas a perder porque va a haber un de que vaso de, del diablo, ¿me entendés? Ahí va a ver la, la percusión va a estar en otro nivel, entonces no se lo pierdan. Mm-hmm. Now back to my boy, Tito. Yeah, yeah. Yo, um, going on a more serious note now, mm-hmm. um, we both know Frankie. Mm-hmm. Uh, we were, we related to him. And honestly, uh, I was, I was still in the military at that time when the, when, he, when the accident happened. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I was in at home vacationing at that at that night. I was actually that was my first night back mm-hmm. from upstate New York from Canada. Actually, I was stationed in Canada, mm-hmm. and that was my first night back. And when it happened, I was watching the news, and it was crazy because I saw a lot of like. You, have you ever been to my house in New York? Mm, I think two forty. Mm, oh no 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 no. Oh. Mm-hmm. So he was right there, literally at mm-hmm. that train station. So we saw all the lights. Yeah. So we were like, I was like, what the fuck is going on? But in my head, he was like, I thought it was like a random Bronx night. You know how yeah. it is in the BX. Of course. So I, you know, I didn't put mine to it. I turned on the TV and they were talking about it. Mm-hmm. So I was like, no fucking way. Yeah. No fucking way. And then uh, some, I think a family member called or, or I saw it on Facebook, something like that. I don't, mm-hmm. I forgot exactly. But then I was like, no way. So I went to the, and I told my mom. And then my mom called my tia. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to say her name. Of course, yeah. But uh, she called my tia, mm-hmm. and my tia confirmed it. Exactly. That's, that's, that's my story, too. And I was like, I couldn't mm-hmm. believe it. I, I just couldn't believe it. Yeah. It's crazy, because he was supposed to come to our house that night, because we had like a little get-together earlier. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. but he, you know, he was taking care of his own business, mm-hmm. and unfortunately, things went the way it went. Yeah. And he, he really hurt me, because of, he was rising. Mm-hmm. Frankie? Yeah. Was taking over the BX. Yes, he was. If anybody disagrees with it, you could, you know, I'm going to keep it it clean. His Facebook page is still open. You could go on Facebook and type in Tech Tracks and everything is there, even on YouTube. Facts. But yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I feel like um, he definitely was one of the main people from our generation that helped elevate us. Like, he was messing with black people. Exactly. He was messing with Jamaican people. Mm-hmm. So he was going places where most Garifuna promoters weren't going. Mm-hmm. And he was young. Yeah. I believe he was younger than me. Cause I think I'm older than him by like a year or two. Okay. So okay. Uh, I was like, I was so amazed and proud of the work that he was putting in. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, most of the, I only went to like one of his parties because I was in the military. Okay. So I couldn't really go. As, uh, I wasn't around. Mm-hmm. But a few times, you know, I saw him in Maximo. Yeah. Um, I saw him in, uh, um, you know, I used to hang out with him sometimes every now and then in uh, Azules. I think it's a play. Was yeah. it a play called Azules back in the day? Yes, it was. Azules used to be on um, which Azules used to be on um, 152nd and Prospect, and then they moved it to one um, what's that? 173rd and Southern Boulevard. Facts. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And uh, the the last time I saw him, like uh, the act- the last time I actually spoke to him, mm-hmm. was in Maximos. I think it was a Christmas party. I was there with my wife, and we were hanging out, and it was him. Um, I believe his older sister. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if I don't know if Nandy was there. Oh, I shouldn't say names, but <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I know that his older sister was there for sure. Yeah. And uh, I spoke to him. That was the first time I saw Tech since 2010. Okay. That was back in 2012. Mm-hmm. It was Christmas 2012. Yeah. 
It was yeah, it was crazy. It was this I know it was December 2012. Mm -hmm. We were hanging out in Maximos. The party was lit and he was there. He was like, Yo, primo, what's up, man? I haven't seen you like forever. I was like, Yo, what's good? Mm -hmm. You know, I was still kinda shy at that time. Yo, I haven't seen you in a long time. Yeah, man. yeah, like that. that. His that. his energy. Yeah, always the happiest voice. <laughs> mm -hmm. But yeah, man, like honestly, he's definitely missed in this um yeah. In this world, Definitely. because he was he was different. He wasn't afraid to be different, yeah. and you gotta respect that. You gotta respect people like you, Frankie, June, mm -hmm. um, that aren't afraid yeah. to be different to pursue what you wanna do. Exactly. So I feel like by us, his legacy will still go on. Because yes, I'm not is. gonna front. Mm -hmm. He he persuaded me. He motivated me. He influenced me mm -hmm. to pursue what I do now. I do yeah. parties. I do events mm -hmm. because I also feel like yo. I feel like if Frankie was still around, yeah. I would have been. I would have been working with my primo. I would have been like, "Yo, yeah. let's do an event together," type mm -hmm. shit, you know. Uh, but uh, by the time I got on board, it was too late. Yo, before, um, before when I used to release songs, I used to send them to Frankie, and he would like, and he would basically, he would basically be the ones to approve it. Like, "Yo, bro, nah, that shit whack," straight up, just like that. And and I feel like after he passed, um, after he passed away. I had it in my mind that he did that so much to my music that when I'm producing something, yes, I hear his voice. Like, nah, bro, that shit whack. <laughs> like, he doesn't have to physically be there for me to still, you know. So that's why when they even come to um, topics about tech tracks, I'm, like, so much stronger about it because, you know, I accepted it. Like, you feel me? Like, he had to go. It was his time. A lot of people feel like it wasn't fair. Yes. But if you're more open-minded to the Bible and stuff like that or whatever, you know, God, you know... <laughs> God got all of our lives written or whatever. I agree. And Dios said that, you know, on June 1st, 2013, he was going to take him. You feel me? And that's just that. And it took me a while to even say what I'm saying right now. It took me a long time to just accept it or whatever. But, yeah, bro, that's life. You feel what I'm saying? But, you know, he was definitely, he's definitely the reason why I even, like, continue or whatever and stuff like that. Because it's just there. It's just like that spirit. I feel like his spirit is like some type of energy. And it's like, it, it's always there. Yes, mm -hmm. especially his last, I, I believe, I could be wrong, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe his last event mm -hmm. was called Project X. The last event? No, that was, I think that was the one before the last one. Oh, okay. Because the last one, I think it was called, um, um, damn, what's the name of that? It was a theme, it was a, what you call it, it was a theme from, um, from this shit that they used to show on like Playboy or whatever, and then it would be like girls flashing their titties and stuff yeah. like that. I forgot the name of it, damn. Uh, no, it's not hot and wild, but something like that or whatever. It, it, was, it was something like that, yeah. yes. Uh -huh. That actually, mm -hmm. you see, as soon as you mm -hmm. said it, like, <laughs> mm -hmm. or whatever. And that, was, and that was May 24th yeah. of 2013. Okay. And he passed away a week later. So yeah. a week before he um, passed away, he had a party that was real. It was successful. Yes, mm -hmm. man. Yeah, definitely. I wanted to go to the Project X one. Mm -hmm. I couldn't make it. Mm -hmm. but right? That, that, I heard that one was super lit. Mm -hmm. But, um... Man, rest in peace, mi primo. For real, man. Francisco Diego, a.k.a. Tech Tracks. You already know. So, um, I wanted to ask you, right? Mm -hmm. What genres of music do you do? What what genre of music do Tito Pringolinis normally listen to? Um, I, I listen to a lot of, like, I listen to a lot of funk music. Because funk music, I feel like, you know, it's it's... It's groovy and it's like you know similar to Garifuna music because you know it has that when you listen to it. Yeah. Like like when you listen to Michael Jackson, like <laughs> wanna be starting something. Hey. You wanna like you feel me? It just you feel me shit like that. And then the instrumentation and shit like that. Like right now, Michael Jackson is my shit. Like you know, Thriller. I listen to that album every day. Off the wall. Like you know, like those type of like you know funk music. Even James Brown and stuff like that. Like you know things like that. That's what I'm listening to at the moment. So I feel like if we have another interview in six months from now, yeah. that answer is going to change for CS, yes, you feel me? Yeah. It's just like when you have a phone, um, like remember before you would put music on your phone? Yep. And then after a while you get tired of everything, then you just delete everything and you start all over again. You know, that's how it is. So at the moment, I'm listening to a lot of Michael Jackson and that's what's, you know, expiring my next productions that I do. You know, because I, as a producer, yo, you grow, if you're not into what you're doing, then you know you'll have a different outcome. But once you're into it, it's like you grow every day. I like agree. Tomorrow I could wake up and just know something that I didn't know today, just because of me turning on my computer and, and you know messing around with my programs and you know just everything I use to produce a song. Mm -hmm. Yo, you you talented like to that point that that you could 
literally, you could do anything, bro. And yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I, believe it or not, like, you know, like, as we were setting up, mm-hmm. I was listening to you, mm-hmm. obviously. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, I like people that are not afraid mm-hmm. to tell me mm-hmm. that I, what I need to improve on. Yeah. Because I feel like if you're not telling me what mm-hmm. I need to improve on, mm-hmm. how, how are you beneficial to my life as exactly. a person? Exactly. Like, you, you just there seeing that I'm doing something wrong, mm-hmm. but you're not correcting me. Mm-hmm. You're not, you're not supposed to be in my circle. Yeah. I don't like people like exactly. that. Exactly. Like, that's why I appreciate you. Mm-hmm. You Definitely. know? Mm-hmm. And um, uh, uh, life is about growth. Mm-hmm. If you're not looking forward to growing as a person, mm-hmm. then w- hey, take it how you want it. Then why are you living? Exactly. <laughs> yo, bro, I like that you said that. You know why? Because not that I wanted to talk about it or whatever, but yo, the way how I came up from three years ago to now is just like different. And not that I want to pat myself on the back or anything, but I... I noticed my own growth. You feel what I'm saying? Because, yeah. yo, I went from, <laughs> I went from, I went from making fun of Aurelio's English <laughs> to making fun of that girl that was in court and I'm putting the Garifuna music in the background and a whole bunch of other things that I used to do. Bro, I go on my Facebook right now and I play any of those videos and it don't even make me crack a smile. Like, you feel me? I look at it like on some like... Damn, this nigga Tito was an ignorant motherfucker. Like you get what I'm saying? So yeah. it's just like, you know, I just I just feel the growth within myself or whatever and stuff like that. But I'm still a big ass kid deep down inside though, <laughs> or whatever. You feel me? Like yeah. like probably on a certain day, depending on how I'm feeling, that video might just come out <laughs> or whatever. And I'll be like, yo, oh shit, this nigga said, What the shit? Like, you know, that's a famous <laughs> quote. Like, you know, in between the, you know, or whatever and stuff like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But it's not something that I'll continue to do. Like, if there was to be another video yeah. of of him speaking that way, I'll mm-hmm. get in contact with him now because we're actually cool now or whatever and stuff like that. I'll be like, no, tío, estás mal. <laughs> mm-hmm. it's, not, it's not the people, it's the people. ¿Me entiendes? Stuff yeah. like that or whatever. But, yeah, you know, it's, you know it's, that's just life, bro. That's I, just life. Mm-hmm. I agree. I feel like, I feel like th- honestly, me personally... Um, as a DJ, people call me promoter, but I hate when people call me promoter because mm-hmm. I don't consider myself a promoter. Yeah. I, I'm just a DJ mm-hmm. that do my own shit, mm-hmm. that I do my own party and events. Mm-hmm. And real quick, right, not trying to deviate from to- from topic, mm-hmm. but the reason why I did my own, I started doing my own events mm-hmm. is because in the Garifuna community, uh, in the co- Garifuna community, there's not a lot of opportunities. Let's mm-hmm. be honest. Yeah. No hay muchas oportunidades en la, en, el, en, el, en la comunidad Garifuna cuando viene de eventos, porque la mayoría del tiempo la gente se, siempre, siempre elige fa- favoritismo. Yep. Ellos siempre eligen a las personas que ellos creen que es, que es, que es bueno, mm-hmm. pero tal vez no es bueno, pero como, como se llevan con él, sí, sí, esa es la mera pija, la, 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 cuando de verdad tal vez es basura. Exactly. Entonces, uh, yo decidí, yo, nobody's going to hire me because they don't know me. Mm-hmm. So let me build my own reputation. Mm-hmm. Let me build my own name. Let mm-hmm. me build my own brand. Yeah. And that's how I started becoming who Sensation is now. Mm-hmm. Two years ago, nobody knew who the fuck I was in Houston. Yeah. Two years later, mm-hmm. most people know who the fuck I am in Houston. Exactly. But nobody did it for me. I did it for myself. Yep. I'm, I'm, I created this. Mm-hmm. And that's what I like about you yeah. and all the other people that I know. Mm-hmm. Y'all work hard yeah. to create who you are. Exactly. Tito Pingolinis is like, yo, I like your comedy. Mm-hmm. At that part of your creativity, mm-hmm. I hope you never lose it. Yeah, I appreciate it. I appreciate it. That's what makes your punta different, mm-hmm. you know. And sometimes, like, when you do the regular punta, mm-hmm. what makes it so special? Probably, I would say the rhythm. I would say the rhythm because I don't credit myself too much on, you know, actual lyrics and stuff like that. I don't consider myself a lyricist of Garifuna music. Pero cuando se trata de las pendejadas, you feel me? I could probably come <laughs> up with some shit, you feel me? Like, you know, it's easier. Yes. Or whatever and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And, man, that's why, like, honestly, this is definitely one of my favorite Garifuna songs from Tito Pingolinis. Mm-hmm. If you don't agree with me... If you don't agree with me, I don't know what to tell you. Andy Ordoñez and Tito, baby. This is one of my favorites. I used to actually try that shit. In. <laughs> I used to try like the, the way you went backwards like that, that while moving. Like, how you, it's like you were moonwalking while dancing, puta, bro. How you did that? I bailar. 
bailar a bailar I like how you incorporated the kids in this video yeah. They actually invited themselves too that ass? They're like, yo, we can't be in the video, we can't be in the video. I'm like, all right, come on, come on. <laughs> Hola, Trixie. Yo, Andy, what's good, bro? Yo, Giovanni. Yo, keep sharing this video. Keep sharing this video. Compartan este video, por favor. Jesse, Papa Loop. Yo, bro, big respect to Garifuna Outlaws. Oh, yeah. Emily, Chris Arola, se le saluda. Yo, people go crazy to this kind of cold part. Yes, man. Like, yo, this video was lit. I would have loved to be in this video. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For real, right? Nah, but. Man, that was one of the songs from Tito Pingolini's yeah. Andy Ordonez, yeah. you know. One of their, their collaborations. One of my lit songs. Pers that's one of my personal lit songs. I, I don't know if I should put it. You get. Now you get what I was telling you about unnecessary collaborations, right? That sounds like me and Andy was in the studio just just lit, and it sounds it sounds something like we did together. Exactly. It don't sound like yo, bro. Just get on this track, and you know I'm gonna see where it goes. It's just like you know you exactly how you just described it. Mm -hmm. And I I love that when things when things flow natural, yeah, you feel it exactly. Like like the conversation that we're having right now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My show is called Fun Conversations with Sensation for a reason. Mm -hmm. I want my audience to feel. Like they're being entertained. Exactly. Like they're at least having fun listening to what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. And whenever I have somebody in front of me, I want the person to feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. I want them to feel like a human. I don't want them to feel pressured. Yeah, exactly. I don't, I don't want them to feel like they got to answer a question. It mm -hmm. shouldn't be like that. Yep. Yeah. And por eso yo le digo que este man aquí, yo, big respect. I appreciate it, Thank bro. you for again, real, bro. For real, from the heart. I and appreciate it. Yo, I don't know if I should play some of the other Tito songs that, <laughs> that I personally enjoy, but I, I, I don't know. I'll probably, I'll probably do it. It depends. Yeah, yeah, yeah of course. <laughs> let it go. Let it go. Yes. And, um, man, your, your event over here in Houston in, in, in my old spot, mm -hmm. man, uh, it was a success. Yo, bro, it was. It was. And the fact, uh, yo, at the beginning, I was like, damn, he is so anal. I was mm -hmm. like, shit, that's how I am. Mm -hmm. That's how I am. Fuck. Mm -hmm. For the people that don't understand the, the analogy, basically um, makes things a bit complicated mm -hmm. or takes it to the ass. That's what anal means. Yeah. So because I am like that. When you want things to come out right, mm -hmm. you are anal. Yeah. Hey, mm -hmm. lack of a better term, fuck mm -hmm. it. But I appreciate that you were that um, uh, persuasive in doing things your way yeah. because look, look at the results. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And I was like, yo... I, lo I like the fact that he was like, yo, I want to be there. Like, you told me like a week early. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, because of things, it didn't happen a week early. Exactly. But, but you it were was still a couple of days. Yeah, a I couple think I got here like on a Tuesday or a Wednesday. Wednesday, mm -hmm. I, yeah. yeah. So you had time to rehearse with like um, Angel. Yeah, with Angel and, um, um, and G Famous. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yo, Angel, yo, let me, let, I'm going to talk about Angel real quick. All right. Angel, I think it's hard headed. He hard headed. But check this out. Check, the, <laughs> check, out, check out his benefits of being hard headed, right? Yeah. Right? So. What I mean by he's hard-headed, right? It's like, you know, I'm telling him, yo, you got the songs, you got the songs, you got the songs, right? And he's mm -hmm. like, and he's like, and he like, man, yeah, bro, I got him, <laughs> man. You ain't got to worry about nothing, man. I got him, I got him, or whatever, and stuff like that. So we get to the rehearsal. So we get to the rehearsal, right? Boom. Yeah. And then I don't know if he was purposely making himself, like, mess up or whatever, but he was fucking with my head, though. So after, <laughs> so after the second try... After the second try, this nigga played the whole song like if he'd been rehearsing it. So I was like, motherfucker, you did rehearse it. But because I was asking you, you were just telling me no. That stupid bitch. But that's my nigga, though. That's my nigga. I just had to put that out there. Yes, for yes. For real. For real. <laughs> Yo, for real, though. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, like, uh, people that came to support that party were like, you know, um, Jacqueline, mm -hmm. um, of course. Mm-hmm. 
Young Stone. Yeah. Uh, he was one of the DJs in that party, actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah. His sister, Steph. Yeah. You know. They hey, Steph, there. what's up? Yeah, right? La tia, la tia. Right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> la tia. Right? Um, man, um, that, the outcome of that party, I was very happy. Yeah, bro. I was very happy because, yo, I swear to you, I'm not going to say the names, but I should, but I'm not because I'm not, I'm, not, <laughs> I'm not controversial like some other shows. Mm -hmm. But, um... Some people think calling me like, yo, you sure you want to do that with Tito Pingolini being the only main act? Yeah, I can imagine. I can imagine. Man, I was like, yes, mm -hmm. he will kill it. Remember when I even told you I want you to like be yourself? Yeah. I want you to be like, 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 they get by like Sucio. Yeah. Remember yeah. I told you that? Because mm -hmm. that's exactly what I wanted. Yeah. I wanted you. I wanted Tito Pingolini. I didn't want the, the PG 13 version. Yeah, I feel you. I, I wanted you. that rated. I wanted you. Like, I wanted mm -hmm. you. As an artist, yeah, there. exactly. And I, I didn't want to filter you out, like, oh, mm -hmm. nothing, nothing, I can see that's the porque. Yo, you know what's crazy? That party, that's exactly how it was, right? Because, yes. cause, cause my crew, and what I mean by my crew, you know, I'm talking about, I'm talking about Youngstone, Giovanni, and stuff like that. Like, you know, like, um, um, what you call it, Steph, Chris, like, you know, the whole crew, even Jackie, <laughs> and stuff like that. Like, you know, like I was saying, like I was saying things on the microphone that only like the crew was like catching on to, and it was just funny. And they made our night, and we still talk about it to this day. Facts. Like, yo, this nigga said on the microphone, like, yo, this nigga said this. Like, yo, this nigga said that. I'm not going to repeat what I said, but you feel me? It's, it's on the video. And it's just, you know, solo son cosas que la mara van a coger, me entende? But it was fun. Exactly. It was fun. And creating memories is something, you know, very important. You get what I'm saying? It's something that's very important, you know, creating memories and stuff like that. So that's why that night went how it went or whatever. Hey, mm -hmm. Flaca, thank you. Um, thank you for the compliment. Oh, Flaca, it. my sis, my sis. Yes, yes, and yes. So, yo, one one of the things I I is one of the things that I feel like it definitely needs to be talked about more often mm -hmm. will be, excuse me, mm -hmm. the misorganization yeah. of event planning. Mm -hmm. I feel like uh, w I, the reason I say Garifuna is because one, like I said in the little June interview, mm -hmm. I am a Garifuna man. Yeah. So was he. Mm -hmm. So are you. Yep. So I feel like my main concern are the issues within the Garifuna community. Exactly. Don't get me wrong. I like I listen to dancehall, reggae, mm -hmm. reggaeton, trap in Espanol. I listen to a lot of different type of music. Mm -hmm. But like, let's be honest. Puerto, Ric Puerto Ricans don't talk about Garifunas. Dominicans don't talk about Garifunas. Mm -hmm. Jamaicans don't talk about Garifunas. So why am I really going to talk much about them here? Yeah. I, I'm, I'm going to use my platform to discuss things that concern my community, mm -hmm. which are Garifunas. Exactly. So I feel like one of the things in our community is the misorganization of things. Mm -hmm. I feel like a lot of people are trying to compete with each other. Yeah. Instead of working together, they're trying to compete with each other, and then they try to do events that they can't handle. Mm -hmm. What do I mean by that they can't handle? One, financially. Yeah. Two, the time. Mm -hmm. Three, they don't have the right collaborations. Mm -hmm. A lot of people work with people that have zero mm -hmm. experience in this field, and they don't know what, they don't know how to promote. Yeah, they don't know how to like um, how to like basically go about it word to mouth mm -hmm. with their friends, which yeah. is the easiest way to promote. Mm -hmm. So I feel like if we were to be able to actually discuss this without people getting in their bag, yeah. things would get better. Mm -hmm. So my my question to you is. What are some things that you think affect Garifuna events nowadays? Like, what are some things that you feel like that could be done better? Bro, hmm, a lot of things. And one, um, one of the, um, what you call it, one thing that people say about Garifuna, they describe us as crabs in a bucket. Yes. When you know when one is crawling up, I even el otro to pull you back down, <laughs> and then y'all just all there again or whatever. But you know how I look at it? I feel like, you know, like going back to what I was saying earlier, everything starts from how the human being is and on top of that, your mindset. Because for an example, right, I feel like there's no need to compete. I feel that way. But people do it anyway. Yeah. Because that's just something that, you know, gets people going. Like, you know, la maldad. Like, you feel me? That's mm -hmm. just something that gets people going. For an example, right? If me and you if me and you were both hungry right now, and there's a plate of food at the end of the corner, and me and you hungry, you're going to try to get there before me, and I'm going to try to get there before you. True. Because we both hungry. Now, if we're thinking about sharing, that's up to us. But you see what's the first instant? The first thing... The first thing you're going to think is not, yo, you know what? I'm going to run and get the play first so we can share it. That's what mentira. 
you gonna run to get the shit first so you can eat. So basically, with me using that as an example, it's just like, you know, I just feel like Garifunas gotta get their mindsets a little better and just, you know, think a little more. I agree. That's all, bro. Because look at what I just said. I'm gonna I'm repeat it again. The first instant to two people that's hungry and there's a plate of food at the end of the corner, you're gonna run to try to get it first. Yep. But you have to be mature to be like, hold on, wait. Now that I got this plate of food first, yo, you know what? He hungry too, man. You know, so I'm going to just, you know, fuck, you know. Maybe not half because half hurts sometimes, but you feel me? Le va a dar algo. Yeah. I feel like if Garifunas was to think that way, a lot of things would be better. I, I, I agree. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And that was uh, another thing, you know, that I feel like is going to correlate with my next topic. Mm-hmm. Um. Here in the uh, us as Garifunas, right? We have a beautiful cu- culture. Let's yeah. be honest. Mm-hmm. From cassave, bonu, pan de mm-hmm. coco, yeah. um, um, what else? Um, a bunch of other Garifuna things, mm-hmm. like from the dresses, the outfits, yeah. the, the language itself. We are a beautiful culture, mm-hmm. but nowadays I feel like a problem, especially from our generation and younger. Yeah. They, they don't want to embrace our culture. They feel more ashamed mm-hmm. of our culture. They rather yeah. act Jamaican. They rather act black mm-hmm. or, or any other culture by our own. Yeah. Okay. I am not saying you cannot embrace all the cultures. I'm not saying you cannot listen to all the cultures' music. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying you cannot dress like all the cultures. But what I'm saying is uh, you should at least embrace yours enough to the point that you represent it a little bit more than you represent other people's cultures. Mm-hmm. Because if we're not going to represent our culture, Who's going to do it for us? Mm-hmm. You got to think about it that way. Yeah. I'm one of those Garifunas that I don't speak shit of Garifuna. Yeah. Maybe I, I, you know, I speak shit like Obagege. Yeah. <laughs> hey, pero, hey, ¿quién no sabe faltar respeto? Exactly. Eso es lo que somos buenos. Yeah, that's Eso the una, first thing we learn. Esa es la una de las cosas del problema con nuestra comunidad. Nosotros somos buenos para faltar respeto a la gente, para hacer las cosas desorganizadas, uh-huh. en vez de hacer las cosas correctas y tener más respeto a otras personas. Uh-huh. Y ese es uno de los problemas que la, la nueva generación de ones After us yeah. are worse than us. Mm-hmm. I feel like the ones after us, they got no chill button. Yeah, for real. Like, let's be honest. All them kids fighting in the park and all of that. And, yo, that shit is ridiculous, bro. Like, like las peleas que pasan en Crotona, yeah. like you said. Yeah. That's, mm-hmm. that's ridiculous. Like, I, I'm glad I don't live over there no more because I feel like things are getting out of hand. Yeah, yo, and you know what's sad about... I, I don't even want to make those videos a topic, but you know what's sad about them videos? That you see it in them kids' faces that they don't even want to fight, bro. Yeah. You hear the niggas in the back. Hey, pegale, oh, pegale. Hey, hey, hey. Pegale su pijazo, oh, pegale. It's just like, that's the most fucked up thing anybody has to go through. When you when you allow someone to control your mind, that's yeah. like, you know, and that's what I analyze in all of these videos or whatever. Si estuvieran peleando on some because they wanted to and that's just what they about, it would have been different. But it just make us look like on some, damn, when are, when, when are we ever going to learn? Or whatever. I agree. Mm-hmm. Totally agree. Yeah. And um, like I feel like um, this is what when I said earlier a few minutes ago that is going to correlate with my next topic. Mm-hmm. This is what I meant. Yeah. I never in, in every interview I I I, I do mm-hmm. I try to touch this topic. Yeah. Because it's it's a social issue mm-hmm. that affects us as humans, mm-hmm. not just as Garifunas, yeah. uh, as humans, mm-hmm. any culture, any race. The topic that I like to talk about a lot, because I feel like I want to raise more awareness towards it, mm-hmm. is bullying yeah. and depression. Because bullying could lead to depression. Depression could lead to you to committing suicide or yeah. people, you know, people killing themselves. Mm-hmm. And I feel like um, bullying is uh, higher now. Yeah. Now that there's social media, mm-hmm. because people feel okay with tormenting other people. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. they can hide like cowards. Behind their cell phones and their and their laptops mm-hmm. and computers, you feel exactly. me? So I was gonna ask you, what uh, have you ever been affected by bullying? Have you ever been bullied, or have you ever bullied somebody? I was just about to tell you, I was a big bully myself, bro. I was in all schools that I went to. I went to school on on two twenty fifth and White Plains, PS twenty one. I was a bully there. I went to. I also went to school in um on West Farms. And was that West Farms and East Tremont CS6? Um, um, CS6, my fault. CS6, that's where I did the most bullying, like, and stuff like that. But yeah, like, I was actually a bully myself. And yo, honestly, bro, that shit is not cool. You know why? Because when I try to get, when I get, um, when I try to get in touch with um, my elementary school friends now, yeah, 
it's not it's not all of them that approve of me or whatever. Like it still be people that be telling me like, oh Tito Reyes, nah, fuck out of here, nigga. One time you thought da 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 da. I have gotten that before, multiple times, and I'm just like, damn. Like I know my heart is clean now, but it's just when you bully a kid and and they stay with that. That shit is the worst feeling ever or whatever. So that's exactly what I meant by when I see them videos of me making fun of Aurelio now or whatever. I just look back at it like on some. It was funny to me at the moment, but what was I trying to prove? I can't even answer that question myself. So it's just like, you know, like, yeah, but bullying, to answer your question, man, bullying, that shit is like, you feel me, it's not cool because people don't forget. Yeah. If if if, if a kid I was in second grade with can tell me right now that I'm 25, oh, Tito Reyes? Nah, my nigga. Nah, bro, one time, da 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 I ain't fucking with you. Same thing with females and all of that. So it's like, you know, I, I went through that. That was something that, you know, I went through as a kid of my life from the time I would say, from the time I was maybe <laughs> seven to like about 14, bro. That's just like, you know, what I was known for in school. And it affected my education or whatever and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. Yo, the fact that you acknowledge that, mm-hmm. you know, on the live video. Yeah. It takes a lot of courage. Mm-hmm. It takes a lot of like, um, um, I would say manliness <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, to come forward and admit that. Because yeah. there's a lot of people that I bet have bullied somebody. Y'all probably watching this video and you know in your heart you have bullied somebody, mm-hmm. but you won't admit it because yeah. you're scared of the way people might react to it. Mm-hmm. So the fact that you came in a in a platform like this and admitted it mm-hmm. gave me much more respect to you. Yeah. Because let's uh me, I'm an advocate for bullying. Mm-hmm. I, I hate bullies. Mm-hmm. I hate bullying yeah. because I was affected by that myself. Yeah. And I feel like that made me a stronger person. Mm-hmm. I'm not gonna lie. Bullying mm-hmm. forced who I am now. Yeah. Bullying made me go to the army, made mm-hmm. me get stronger physically and mentally. Mm-hmm. So I'm not gonna front. Sometimes certain things in life you have to go through yeah. to make you the better person that you are exactly. now. Exactly. So I ain't gonna lie, mm-hmm. but that that doesn't justify mm-hmm. the bullying that I went through. It yeah. doesn't justify the bullying that many kids go through just because you are physically or mentally more capable of achieving things or getting places than other people. Mm-hmm. It doesn't give you the right to hurt other people. Yeah. You don't know the mental damage that you're doing to that person. For real. So I feel like. If you are a bully, I'm going to always say this in every single interview. If you are a bully, stop right now. Because sooner or later, mm-hmm. somebody has your number. You're going to run into somebody that you can bully, and that nigga is going to fuck you up. <laughs> it happened to me in fourth grade, you heard? <laughs> it happened to me in fourth grade. So, yep. um, man, I honestly... Hey, Latasha, thank you. <laughs> hey, Miss Tasha. You actually watching. What's up? Miss Tasha, welcome to my show. Um, but yeah, um, man, bu- uh, bullies are a thing of the past. You're going to get caught up because now if you do cybernetic bullying, people could trace your, uh, what's it called? Mm, your, your, I haven't even heard of that. Uh, ABP, uh, some, your number. They mm-hmm. could trace your internet number. Oh, like IP address. IP uh, your address. IP address. Uh-huh. They could trace your IP address and know where you live. So if you're bullying somebody through a computer or a yeah. cell phone, they're going to find you. Mm-hmm. So it's up to you if you want to take the risk. Yeah. So, yo, Tito. Mm-hmm. Tito. Mm-hmm. Let me ask you a random ass question. I knew it. I knew it. Ha, ha, ha. Mm-hmm. You're a titty man or an ass man? An ass man. Why? Why? Because I would say, I would say because of the imagination. <laughs> wait, 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 hold on. I've never heard of that one. Now I am intrigued to hear the rest. <laughs> I, I would say because of the imagination. Because for an example, right, a girl, a girl with big titties, or nice titties, whatever it is, I look at it like it's just titties. Now, right, ass. There's different kind of asses. The same way there's different kind of titties. So, I said to myself a lot. What what you call it? To myself, I said this to myself a lot of time. Fuck, que rico es culo pa. <laughs> I've said that more than I have said fuck, que rica la chicha de jamón. You feel me? I've said, <laughs> I've said that more than that. So I'll go, yeah, ass. Nice, nice, mm-hmm. nice. <laughs> that was the random question of the day. <laughs> I don't do it in every interview. I do it depending on who I have in front of me. Mm-hmm. And I know Tito, right, Tito? You could say, do you mind me asking something like that? No, not at all. You have it on record, people. Mm-hmm. Um, but um, 
man, going back to a little bit more of Tito Pingolini's The Artist, mm -hmm. which artist do you feel that you could connect to? Like, I'm talking about, like, uh, a main uh, genre, mm -hmm. like, our artists, like, uh, you know, more, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, um, mainstream. Um, mainstream? Yeah, more mainstream. Um, honestly, bro, Marshall Mathers, bro. You know who's Marshall Mathers? Nah, that's an underground artist, isn't he? Marshall Mathers, no, 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 the no, no, third, no, no, no. matter of fact. Okay. The okay. third. Yeah. No, I'm, no, what I mean, no, no, what I mean by the third is that his grandfather's Marshall Mathers, his father, and he's the third. I think I know who you're talking about. You should. Yes. Marshall Mathers. Yes, I, well, I could be wrong. I don't know. That's Eminem. Yeah, okay, I was uh -huh. right. Yeah, <laughs> I felt like I was in the classroom, and you know when the teacher is asking a question, you know it in your head, mm -hmm. but you don't want to raise your hand because you're afraid that you might be wrong, but you know in your heart you're right. For real. That's exactly what just happened. Mm -hmm. I knew that it was Eminem he was talking about, but mm -hmm. I was afraid. Yeah. So why Eminem? Why Eminem? Because I feel like when people hear my music, they automatically say, like, you know, like, oh, you know, he's trying to be like Eminem, or he's like the guy from Eminem. But what people don't know is that I've studied Eminem's life. I've studied him so much that I'll tell you this right here. I don't even want to meet him in person because of how he is as a person. And people going to probably be like, what? Nah, if you know who and how Eminem is, that's not a nigga you're going to want to meet. And I'm not even trying to make him sound like a bad person because he's not at all. But just, you know, you hear it in the way I am. That song, that's on Marshall Mathers LP yeah. or whatever and stuff like that. So it's just his life. I respect it so much, and not that it's relatable, but you, but you know what? Like yo, you're not you're not wrong for wanting to close yourself out from the world because of how people are and how people think, and you know stuff like that or whatever. So it's deeper, it's deeper than just his lyrics and his style musically or whatever. Like you know, like I really admire his life and stuff like that. And he's another one that I can say that. He was doing a whole bunch of, you know, dissing people and stuff like that. And you hear his growth after his albums, like after the, um, what you call it, after the Eminem show that he yeah. released in 2004. Like yeah. when you hear Encore and Recovery and those albums like that, like you hear the growth, like on some, yo, this nigga's not wilding out anymore. But lyrically, you know, it still makes you feel the same way or whatever. And I could go on and on or whatever, you know, just so the people won't think that. I just, you know, jacked his voice and I put it on my songs and that <laughs> or whatever. You feel me? Mm -hmm. And um, I was actually wondering, like, Eminem, he obviously, you know, he been publicly. Mm -hmm. He said that he been struggling mm -hmm. about yeah. um, mm -hmm. his addiction. Yeah. You know, having he, he his, almost own died, bro. his personal demons. He almost died. Does Tito Pingolinis have personal demons that he struggled with? Um... Honestly, bro, and I'm not even going to lie to you just because I'm on a radio show, but I would say no, bro. I feel like I did before. Two years ago at this exact time, if you could, if you was to ask me that question, I won't even know how to answer you because I'd be like, yo, how this nigga know? But as far as right now, bro, like, nah, bro, like, I feel like I'm living the best time of my life because everything just feels great. Like, you feel me? Like, yeah, yeah I feel like I'm living the best times of my life, but I don't feel like I have like, demons that I, like, deal with or whatever, you know, because, like I mentioned earlier, I get along with both my parents, my siblings, my significant others. So it's like, you know, everything everything is well balanced. I agree. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then another thing, too, the friends that I happen to have around me are at the moment, you know, they're not showing me no signs of fakeness and, you know, no signs that I need to leave these niggas alone or none <laughs> of that or whatever, you feel me? So Thanks. everything, you know, everything is good. You know, I feel blessed. I agree, man. And f feeling like feeling like you're happy, mm -hmm. that's one of the best feelings ever. Like, yeah. Feeling like, you know, you are the best place in your life, mm -hmm. personally, mm -hmm. it's a great feeling. Yeah. Because I, I know for a fact, I used to battle with my own demons, mm -hmm. you know. Every now and then, they sneak up on me again. Yeah. But I feel like uh, my purpose in life mm -hmm. is to help other people yeah. confront their own demons. Mm -hmm. And um, that's why I feel like, uh, I feel like God, well, mm -hmm. I'm not a religious person, like yeah. I said before, but I feel like the higher power mm -hmm. will keep blessing me in all the ways because mm -hmm. he knows that my mission in life mm -hmm. is to help other people. Exactly. Mm -hmm. I feel like when you, when you feel like you want to help somebody, it, it comes out natural. Exactly, bro. And like me, I have a donating thing on my page 
to donate to a bullying anti pro bullying it's a it's an organization that helps kids that have been bullied or kids that have tried to take o- take away their life because of bullying. Mm-hmm. I have a donating button in my page. Uh, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll put it up again. I'll share it again. For people that don't mind sharing a 50 cents, 25 cents, one cent, a dollar yeah. towards that organization. It's not mine. It's an organization within Houston, I believe. Houston or North Carolina, one of them. Mm-hmm. But um, I feel like if you don't have a purpose in life, you're going to get lost. Yeah, for real. So, yo, and speaking of a purpose in life, I actually went through an experience where I caught a heart attack when I was 16, mm-hmm. and now I live with a defibrillator in my chest that basically controls my heart or whatever. Yeah, yeah, bro, that's serious. Holy, f- and I just recently got a battery change, like I had put it on Facebook when I was in the hospital. Oh, yeah, 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 uh-huh. yeah, they changed the battery to my defibrillator. That was an open heart surgery. Or whatever, like like two months ago. Holy fuck. Mm-hmm. Or whatever. Yeah, that happened to me at 16. I was walking with my cousin, and I collapsed. With Justin, you know Justin. Yeah. I was walking with Justin, and I collapsed, or whatever. And, nigga, if it wasn't for Justin, I wouldn't even be sitting here right now. Or whatever, because he was with me. He had to go on my phone to call the ambulance, and you know, stuff like that, or whatever. And shit like that. Yeah, so, you know, I went through that. So, speaking of a purpose in life, basically, the ambulance pronounced me dead. Or whatever, and they had to, and they had to use the defibrillator to shock me three times, and they're not supposed to do it more than twice because you know that's delicate for the heart or whatever, yeah, and stuff like that. But they did it one more time, and when they did it that last time, my heart was beating three hundred beats per minute. Fuck. So that's like, yeah, or whatever, and stuff like that. Until I got to the hospital, and I was in a coma for seven days. I was in a coma for seven days, and then I got up out of that, and I just feel like you know, my purpose in life is real big. You know, damn. yeah, yo, mm-hmm. man, yeah, bro. Yo, t- <laughs> I'm gonna leave it for after the show, but damn, mm-hmm. damn, bro, like, yeah. wow, mm-hmm. yo, yo, how we looking on the timing, Rich? We good? I told ya, it's unedited, raw, mm-hmm. for shit. Real. <laughs> I, yo, it is what it is. Yep. If you want fakeness, go watch Jerry Springer. <laughs> 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 but uh, anyways. Mm-hmm. Um, I just wanted to say before you know anything happens, I wanted to say thank you mm-hmm. yeah. um, for accepting my invitation mm-hmm. to come to my show. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, be, you being here, like I told Little June, and like I told Melissa, yeah. and like I told Junk Stone, mm-hmm. my f- episode one nigga, right, <laughs> right. that um, it's it's uh, the people that come here to me mm-hmm. are people that I feel like I got more to offer to the world. Yeah, I feel like yo no voy a invitar a un a una persona aquí. Because one, it's my house. Bro, you know what's crazy? <laughs> like, you know what's crazy? Everybody, everybody, everybody who you had here, everybody who you had here means something to me. Starting from Youngstone, you feel me? That's like my little bro since day one. And even when you had, even when you had Torre over here, when you had Edwin. Yeah. That's a, yo, he was a big person in Garifuna music. Oh, he, he's, he still is a he big still person. He still is, you feel Hell me? Yeah. Like, that's a, that's a man right there that I respect, you feel me? That's like my big brother, so it's just like, and then I'm the third, I'm the third person to be here, right? I'm, I'm the third mm. episode, if I'm not mistaken? No, the fourth. The fourth? You're the fourth episode. Oh, okay, okay. I thought it, it was just... It's Youngstone, uh-huh. uh, More Suas, uh-huh. and Little June, uh-huh. and Altito Pingolinis. Look at that. I know... What you call it? Yo, you know what's crazy? When I mentioned everybody you had here means something to me, I was just thinking about Stone and Tore. But June, too, that's my cousin. And we go way back from when we was 12, Sensation Band and all of that. So everybody who you had here means something to me. So you so you just saying that, and I'm a very spiritual person or whatever. Yeah. So you just saying that, like, you know, like, it's real, bro. It's real. Mm-hmm. For, and, and another thing, too, you can never allow bad vibes in your house. Never, never. You get what I'm saying or whatever. So, you know, that's why, it's, you know, what you're saying, I just felt it because I looked at the shows and I looked at the people that have been here and I'm like, yo, esta son gente respetable. You get what I'm exactly. saying? Exactly. Mm-hmm. Like, honestly, like, if you think you're going to come to my show in Shabakanya, you're wrong. Yeah. I have a nine minute. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> I'm going to keep that to myself. But <laughs> uh, let's let's just say that the Texas law will protect me if you come and try to do some funny shit in my house. Let's just put it that way. But anyways, mm-hmm. um, I honestly uh, I created this platform to be able to, to help people um, and also help 
my brand and promote ourselves. DJ Johnstone, DJ Tortuga, El Que Se Malea. Ya saben, pierden, va? Um, I got my brother, Honduras, of course. That's that's my brother, man. Like, Honduras, big respect, bro. Hell like, yeah. El Primo ahí. Yo, yo, you know what's crazy? He was one of, like, he was one of, like, my first supporters when I first started, like, you know, putting stuff on SoundCloud or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he was like, yo, Primo, when you gonna drop another track? When you gonna drop another track? And he'll promote it, and I always notice he'll like it on SoundCloud or whatever. Yeah, man, Hundu Us, Hundu Us. Yes, of oh, course, yeah. man. Like he he um he also backed me up in the idea of having you. Mm -hmm. Like my brother, that's, what's up. that's one of the reasons he's my partner. For mm -hmm. people that don't know, my brother is my main partner. Like we both co CEOs, mm -hmm. president, co president or vice president. That's how it literally works. Mm -hmm. Because my brother, like if I was to die, I even told my brother, take the torch and keep going, bro. Because mm -hmm. GME is not just me anymore. Yeah. I feel like GME is starting to live through other people like Youngstone Turtle. Mm -hmm. Like, we are supposed to be the image for something better. Mm -hmm. And that's my goal. So if I, bought, if I was to die tomorrow, I, I, I told my brother, yo, keep pushing this. Because mm -hmm. I worked so hard for this. I spent so much money on this. You cannot just let it die. Yep. But anyways, going back to my boy Tito Pingolinis. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> yo, that's a song that... <laughs> oh, I like it. I like this one. I like this man. one. Yo, if you don't like it, I don't give a... <laughs> Aquí voy. This is one of my favorites from Tito Pingolini. <laughs> Well, Jacqueline, GME stands for Guevara Mariano Entertainment. That's what it stands for, as in the acronyms. But GME stands for more than those acronyms. GME stands for Greatness, Excellence, and, of course, Originality. All of us have our own style. If you look at everybody in GME right now, from the way we look to the way we do the things, we all different. We got Rastas. <laughs> we got Dia Tortuga, que le vale la verga de la quinta madre. We got my brother Honduras, big spender, flashy nigga. And you got myself, the humble talk shit guy. But, you know, I also talk facts. So all of us in, in GME, we, we, we come together as a group. And we, we, we show our differences. So that's what GME is about. Yo, 2015, 2015, man. Facts. Right, man, that was one of the songs from Tito Pingolini que a, a mí me llega. I, I would, those are one of the songs that I would play in my car. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, I'm, like, that's, uh, yo, by the way, GME Network coming soon, GME Network. And I got a couple of shows like, oh, you think you got bars? That's going to be one of the shows that you're going to want to watch. Mm -hmm. And uh, Car Karaoke, that's another one. DJing. With style. Now that one is gonna put a lot of DJs on blast. That's lit. Because what I got planned, mm -hmm. let's see if you really that good of a DJ. That's lit. I'ma put you on blast because me, I could back my shit up. But there's a lot of DJs that they serve that good. But if you come to my show, I'll put you on blast and let's Ooh. see how good you are. 
And I'm not talking about just dancer and reggae. Anybody can do that shit. Woo. Let's see if you could do kisomba. Let's see if you could do EDM, salsa, merengue. Now, if you could do those shits, you if you could that? do those type of genres, bueno, man, pues. I give you respect. Hip hop. Hip hop. That's going to be one of the main genres. If you cannot fucking mix hip hop, you're not a DJ. Mama <laughs> Anyways, so, yo, bro, I wanted to ask you, like, if you were to see Eminem right now, uh -huh. like right here, mm -hmm. what would you tell him? What would I tell him? Yes. Yo, honestly, bro, I don't even know. I feel like I'll go by his vibe first. Okay. If he's waiting for me to tell him anything, yeah, then I just won't. And I feel like I'll stand out more that way. Because can you imagine how many artists come across their fans? Yeah. And, you know, they all have that same experience or whatever. I might just say, wow, Eminem. And after that, I will not say a word. And maybe that would stand out to him. Like, yo, there was this one time a nigga was hyped to see me, but... No, no, he doesn't even say nigga. Look at that. He don't even say nigga. He doesn't use that word. Facts. You get what I'm saying? So he'll probably be like, yo, I seen this guy one day, and he was just like, you know, wow, Eminem. And he never said anything after that. He probably going to respect you for that. You feel me? That stands out more than... Yo, Eminem, y'all know all your songs. Hi, my name is, yo, hi, kids. Do you <laughs> like Vine? Like, you feel me? That's, you know? <laughs> it's annoying. Or whatever, yeah. And it's typical. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's and very it's typical. typical. Yo, you know, speaking of typical, right? People do that when they come up to me or whatever. But you know what I like about people? Yes. <laughs> you know what I like about people? That they remix the shit. <laughs> They're like, Pigolini, me llega tu canción porque le dijiste a la sobrina que tu tía que oh. I was just like, yo, I never said sobrina, but I like the fact that your mind did that. Like, you feel me? Like, add on to it. Fuck it. Make it your own song. Facts. Or whatever. Mm -hmm. Yo, like, honestly, um, like, uh, like, you know, Tortuga, I don't know if you're still there, but mm -hmm. I like, you know, how we speak in, in our little thing. Mm -hmm. um, I told him, like, I want his show to be part of my network. Yeah. My brother convinced me even more mm -hmm. because he's like, yo, Tortuga got his own show mm -hmm. and the way he got his crowd yeah. because, you know, from the beginning, from like two, three years ago, mm -hmm. he stated, uh, well, he's been saying que le vale verga since like 2009. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But, um, Super Tarigi. Yes. <laughs> hey, hey Super Tarigi. Right. Hey, Tortuga, terminala, terminala. <laughs> super Tarigi, Super Tarigi, Super Tarigi, right. suck my. Hey! <laughs> Yo, Tortuga, that was, a, that was a classic, bro. That was a classic. That was a classic. That was a classic. Yo, but that was my. That was, <laughs> that, was one of the, that was one of the biggest hits that I produced in New York City. Yeah, bro, you already know that? Oh, man. We did that right in my room in 1160 Ho Avenue. I don't mind putting that address out because yo ya no be wahi. Yeah. <laughs> in 1160 Ho Avenue over there in the Bronx, that's where we did um Super yeah. Tariki Suck my dick. Hey. Yeah, all okay. Of that. Mm -hmm. Yo, if I knew how to do that, ne yo, next time I have you in an interview in the future, I'm going to have like, 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 like the pads thing yeah, where right. you can make the beat. Right, and so, the piano. Yeah, so you could do it right there. Tiki, tiki, tiki. Hey. <laughs> but anyways, yo, the difference is like, uh, like I told, like, Sam, like my brother said, Honduras, mm -hmm. is that. um. Uh, he got his own audience, yeah. and he got the way that he presents his, to his topics. Exactly. It could be controversial at times, mm -hmm. yes, like I told you. Yeah. But that's him, mm -hmm. and that's what makes his difference. Exactly. That different. Yo, you know what's crazy? I used to tell Tortuga, I'm like, yo, bro, stop saying que vos sos la mera pija. But you know what's the thing? He has his own mind, and after a while, the more he kept saying it, I'm just like, yo, you know what? Fuck it. Yeah. Like, you feel me? Nobody else says it. Exactly. A lot of people think it, but nobody tiene el valor de decir que son la mera pija. Exactly. So I'm just like, you know what? I looked at it different. I'm just like, yo, you know what? Fuck it, que lo diga. Just like I call myself el rey de la punta. Yeah. No, that, that's actually a pretty good statement. Though. You feel me? A lot yeah, of people going to be like, it, yeah. <laughs> a lot of people going to be like, el rey. Eso no es un rey, si solo canta me vale verga y que hola tía con que la sobrina y que no sé con la abuela. They add shit to songs that I don't put on there or whatever and stuff like that. So it's just like, yo, you know what? Like, shit, yes. like, fuck it. I'm going to call myself el rey de la punta because nobody else is or whatever. So fuck it for right now. Like, you know. As you should, bro. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, seriously, as mm -hmm. you should. Like, yeah. I feel like if you're not going to stand up for yourself and your brand that you are the best, mm -hmm. then people won't believe that you are. Exactly. You got to believe it first 
so people can believe it too. Mm-hmm. And that's one of the things I respect about Tortuga. Mm-hmm. Yes, sometimes he brags a lot, mm-hmm. but fuck. Yeah, you exactly. got to respect that nigga's confidence. Exactly, exactly. You got to respect the fact that he will stand up for himself and anybody. Exactly. There's a lot of haters out there. Mm-hmm. I got haters, and I don't...